Hi there. Sorry I'm a minute late. I was trying to finish my lunch, and I ran in to make sure there was nothing in my teeth. <laughs> hey, everyone. Good to see there's already a few of you here. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, and there's an ad. Why do I get the ads? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> there we are. So how is everyone doing today? What have you been up to? Hi, Patricia. Oh, on Long Island. How are things there in New York? Oh, and people are watching me fix my hair. Oh, well, I guess it'll just stick out. <laughs> We're doing okay here in, uh, in Mass. It's just kind of surreal. It looks like we got seven here, so everybody say hello, tell me where you're from, and tell us what you're working on these days. I've got so many projects going on in my craft room. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you some of them if you want, or we can jump right into the fairy house. I think I'll wait a couple minutes just for more people to come on. I'm curious if anyone's actually been working on the fairy house with me. I think a couple of people were last week. Or if you, you're just here to hang out and chat. That's fine, too. Hi, Simply Cra Crafting. Wesley Chapel, Florida. Now that it, I'm in Massachusetts, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Sherry. Maryland. My mom's name is Marilyn. Is yeah, my mom's name is Mary. And when I was a kid, I was always convinced that she was from Maryland because it was Maryland. <laughs> So what's everybody working on these days? I'll, I'll show you one thing I've been doing. Stuck right here is I made a few masks. Uh, no, that's just a stray thread there. <laughs> yeah, I made a few masks and then I ran into Walgreens yesterday and got some elastics to uh, put them on. Hello from Ontario. Hi, Barb. When I went out shopping on Saturday, I went to Costco, and maybe a third of the people out there were wearing masks. Excuse me. Then, hello, Sonia. Um, and then I went out yesterday. I had to go to Trader Joe's, and about three-fourths of the people were wearing masks. And I felt like maybe I ought to be wearing mine, too. Oh, don't be stuck on the news. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I've been avoiding the news, if at all possible. I just watch the bare minimum, kind of get the highlights every day, and then move on to other things. Paper crafts. That sounds like fun. Actually, I have a paper craft I'm going to make for my son for his birthday, which is in two weeks. I don't know what we're going to do about that. His birthday is in two weeks, and then my husband's is 10 days after that. 90% had gloves and masks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, anyways. So is anybody else making masks? I'll show you these on camera. It's easier with two hands once I get the, the camera moved up. Um, these are kind of an interesting design. They're a little bit different than some of the ones I've seen out there. Oh, and look, I remembered my lapel mic. Um, oh, your son's going to be 11. What are you guys going to do for a birthday? It's uh. <laughs> 
Yeah. All right, I am going to go ahead and put the phone so you can see what I'm doing. Give me just a moment to do that. Hey, Linda. We're just switching to a different view. Oh, let go. Ah, cords, cables, everywhere. And there we go. So this is my work desk right now, loaded with stuff. I've got so many things going on. Now I know that if I'm on that tile, I am not out of frame and you can see what I'm doing. So. Zero plans for the poor kid. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a rotten time of year to have a birthday, but at least it is, didn't happen like around Christmas time. You know, that would have been really tough. These are the masks I've made. I think this fabric was um, the backing for a quilt I made for my son years ago. I just started digging in my stash. This is an interesting pattern because it, it has a, um, I think it's called the Olsen type. It has a pocket in here and then you send these to the hospitals and they can fit them with the nose pieces that they want and they can fit them with a filter right in here. And... Um, they worked out pretty quick. If you don't count the hour I spent fighting with my serger to get it working properly, <laughs> uh, then uh, they took maybe 20 minutes each. So I made a whole bunch, and uh, I'll make some more and probably get at least a few dozen and then send them off to a local hospital. I think I put a link for this. Um, Right, yeah, hol holiday gatherings. I know. Am I the only one? I'm sure I am not the only one who has just really craved comfort food. And I've been doing my best not to do comfort food because I don't want to gain back all the weight I lost. So if you want that pattern for that mask, I did share a, um, I shared it on my Facebook page not too long ago. Oh, see, I've been craving bread, <laughs> but I haven't been eating it. I've been good. Well, I might not have been good on my at Trader Joe's on my way home, what I ate from there yesterday. But Oh, thank you about the bracelet. I shared this on Instagram not too long ago, and um, I thought I'd wear it because I mentioned it last week. It's, it's a loom woven bracelet. I love this clasp. It's very secure. Can you tell? Sheesh. There we go. Um, so it's woven on a loom. It's a gorgeous pattern. I didn't come up with it. Um, it's the Beaded View shop on Etsy. She has peyote and loom patterns. And uh, hers are different colors. And um, yeah, it was 25 different colors. And uh, yeah, this was a fun project. It is interesting, though, working on something like this and realizing how different the sizes are of uh, seed beads. You know, these are all size 11s. Now that it's done, you can't tell. But while I was working on it, it was so annoying that yeah, you really can't see it. But these white, these pink ones are huge compared to the white ones, and it looks so uneven. But this border on the edge kind of took care of that. I'm actually going to leave this off because I think it's going to be annoying and clanky while I'm working. So I'm going to just leave it off. So. <clears throat> yeah, you know, my husband's sleep schedule got has gotten really out of whack. I had to kind of yell at him and tell him, not yell at him, but tell him, listen, you're messing me up. While you're at it, you got to get back on track, because it was he was keeping me up, staying up late. So who has gotten 
to sort of this stage on their fairy house. Just out of curiosity, or am I the only one? Insomnia has got to be the worst, Heidi. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine. I'm so blessed that I sleep well, and I feel for anyone who does not sleep well. So this is what you watched me make last week. Um, yeah, this one's actually, and wearing cuffs, I actually don't always like to wear cuffs, and this tends to slide down. And, and so it, it's, it's just kind of annoying, but I do wear it because it's, it's pretty. <laughs> but anyways, this is where we got to on the fairy house last week. Well, I hadn't put the grout on. I had left you with directions for putting the grout and then baking. And I wanted to show you some options for grouting if you're doing a stone cottage, really any kind. Now this one, actually I did grout. Uh, it, I just used the liquid clay and some embossing powder. And so it's pretty subtle. You can see it in there, but it, it kind of like matches the stone. Oh, hooray, Kim. I hope that you will share your... Um, share what you made on our Facebook group. Show, show us what you've done, because that, that's one thing about this particular format. Uh, you know, I one thing I love about teaching live classes is seeing how everybody takes the ideas and does something completely different with them. It's so cool. And, and so this format, you guys can see me, but I can't see what you're doing. Um, so do share it on Facebook. So what I did for this one, because I thought that the look of the grout was just a little too subtle here. I like it. It's cool. And it's just different. But what I did was I added a few drops of white acrylic paint to my liquid clay. And then did this one. And I like this a lot better. And I came across a really cool tool. <laughs> I had to replace the battery in my cell phone this weekend and so I bought a kit and it's got tweezers and um, you know all the things you need to take your phone apart yes the Facebook group is keepsake crafts create and I will share the link in the description box below it, I did put it in last week after uh, we finished up so I'll, I will share the link down below or you can look at last week's video if I don't because I probably won't get to it for a little while but anyways, so I replaced my cell phone battery and it came with all these little tools for taking apart your, um, your phone so that you could get at the battery. And I don't know what this was supposed to be for. I guess it's for popping something. Yeah, I guess that goes in, but I didn't need it. But I looked at it and said, huh. And actually it was great for like going in and scraping off the glass and cleaning it up, especially after I had used stuff to wipe this on. And then there were like little bits of fiber all in the all in the spots that I didn't want them. So I'm always keeping my eyes open for uh, for new tools to use with clay. So these houses need roofs, and what can we do for fairy roofs? One of the things I like to think of when I'm making fairy things is not to just make people things in miniature. Yes, it's very exciting. Don't you feel very clever, Patricia, when you find a tool and you're like, I can use that for something it was not intended for. I don't know, maybe I just feel rebellious. <laughs> um, but yeah, making fairy things, instead of just making a miniature mailbox, for example, hang on a sec. Oh, I thought, well, what would the fairies use for a mailbox? Well, maybe they'd find an acorn and use it as a mailbox. This is one of my tutorials in my Etsy shop, by the way. And this is not a real acorn, it's polymer clay. So that's the way my thinking goes, is not just miniaturize people things, but find, uh, think about what would the fairies find in our world that they would use for their own purposes. So I think I, I, I know I showed you this one last week, 
where the house is shingled with leaves. And this is another tutorial. You can tell this is grubby. It's been out in my garden for years. It's about time to put it back out. And it's held up very well. The only thing um, is that I think I had put some gilders paste on the leaves and that's kind of worn away. But even the acrylic paint that I put on the rocks, a lot of that, especially the part that's protected by the leaves, is still there. So you don't need to put a finish on your uh, on your polymer clay, and, and you know, the the fin the clay will last longer than the finish as a rule. So other things you could do are here's one I made years ago. Actually, I made this shortly after I made this house. So this was many years ago. I didn't really like it. So it's been sitting in a drawer unfinished. But the idea that the fairies might use a blossom, I don't know that that goes really at all. <laughs> no. But that they might use a flower as a roof. Um, yeah. No. See, this is why I didn't use it, because I really don't like it. Yeah, the ladybug is cute, isn't she? That's where I start to have fun. Well, I have fun the whole time, but I really love adding the details. So you could use a flower as um, a roof. Here's another one of the fairy garden pieces I made. So this is a little well, and you can see that they used a blossom. So this is, hey, Pandora, good to see you again. Um, I use a little flower as the bucket. Again, what would the fairies use from our world? And this well is shingled with pine cone scales. Oops. That's right. <laughs> uh, so, so think about that. You don't have to do... What I'm doing today is actually something kind of different. Um, but just to kind of get your mind thinking, what other things. Another thing I had thought of doing today was a mushroom top. Uh, I have, here's one I made with air dry clay. There's foil and I think that there's paper in here for the top as an armature for the top and I think there's even a glass, like a little glass voter holder on the inside. This was interesting. Air dry clay is a rather different animal than um, polymer clay. But you could see, you know, if I put it like this, how that would be kind of cute and give you the idea of, uh, of making maybe not quite so big, but just to give you that idea that you could make a mushroom top. You know, give me ideas for what else. Yeah, I, I have no limits um, as to what, Sherry, as to what could be or might be or is possible. It's just however I, you know, whatever I think of that I think would be cute. I, I had a little girl and her family uh, relatives come visit last summer. She's an extremely creative child. But she, I, I could tell she was limited by her father who... He was a great guy, love him, but he was very much an engineering sort, and his mind worked that way. So when she looked at my dragons, she was thinking, yeah, but would those wings really support them? <laughs> um, and I'm like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I didn't tell her that. But if you want to think that way, then that's fine, more power to you. But for me, it's just how it looks and where my imagination goes and I'll leave the uh, you know the um, possibilities to someone else to figure out I thought I'd show you while I was dragging this out I thought I'd show you this gal you may not have seen her this is granny toadstool oh, let's see if I can angle her she sits on well her toadstool this is a fun project. If you want to make something like this, I highly recommend the book by Dawn Schiller called Fay Maker, where she shows you how to make well, Fay. <laughs> but this doll is posable. Um, the only parts that I sculpted were her feet. Oh, these are bloomers. Oh no. Her feet, her hands, and her head. 
and then the rest is a wire armature and she's got like a stuffed soft body in there so you can pose her which I just think is so much fun I did used to make dolls um, Yeah, I love that book, Fame Maker. It's one of my favorites. Um, she really walks you through it very well. Um, and by the book, um, there are individual tutorials on Amazon that they kind of ripped, the publisher ripped out of the book and sell digitally. Uh, and she gets zero money from those, which I think is very wrong. So I, I asked her about that when I was thinking about writing a book. Um, a few years ago but there's last remember last week we were talking about story um, now there's a story with this lady so here's this little fairy I'll move her granny out of the way for a moment she can sit on her toadstool but this little fairy you could see she has a tear in her wing that's why she looks so sad and so she sits on Granny's lap, and there's Granny with her, her magic thread and her needle sewing it up for her. So that's my story. I don't know more of the story than that. Oh, bye, Patricia. I'm glad you uh, joined us for a little bit. But that, for me, that's enough, unless somebody wants to write more of the story. So those are just some ideas and a few things that I have hanging around. But what I'm going to do um, is actually do a shingle roof like this one. I showed you last week with Rosalita and her castle. I'm going to do a shingle roof. It's just what I kept coming back to in my mind every time I looked at it and thought about it. So I'm going to do that. But you can take it and go as far as you want and do whatever you want with it. When I looked at this, these rocks, oh yeah, and so I grouted this with this mix. And when I looked at the rocks, what they made me think of was like something on a rocky isle in the sea. Um, just something by the ocean. Now, I didn't want to grout these rocks because, well, they're not part of the building like this. It's something the building is sitting on. So what I did was I just kind of dabbed my finger in this and wiped it over. And I may go back and do a bit of um, antiquing. And maybe, yeah, it's going to be tough to antique because they're so craggy. But maybe get some dark color down in there. So we'll see about that. But... This really made me think of the ocean. And, um, hmm. So I actually went and looked up lighthouses because I was thinking, ooh, a fairy lighthouse, that sounds like fun. And, and then I had all these ideas that required far more engineering than I could manage on a live stream. <laughs> but I did get some ideas and I'm going to do kind of these warmish colors for the shingles and we'll talk more more about that. This is just, this I also made years ago. I made this about the same time I made this. This is not baked. It's just some translucent clay on an armature of, of um, aluminum foil. And this is how, uh, this is a great way of building an armature is just on some aluminum foil. Here's one I made the other day for this, this house. I don't think I love that. <laughs> but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, sculpting with aluminum foil because it's, it's kind of fun and freeing. I took a class with Christine Dumont and Donna Greenberg a couple years ago, an online class. It would be fun to take one in person. But so far, not possible. But one of the projects that they had us do was to sculpt in polymer clay. Now, am I still live with you guys? Are you still there? Let me just refresh. Oh, 
<laughs> now I have another ad. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Mine was just, I got the spinny thing and I wasn't getting any more comments. So, okay. Um, but one of the things they had us do was sculpt in, in aluminum foil. Just pull off a sheet and play with it. And it was a fascinating exercise. It was actually very interesting because I had just gotten back from a trip out to Seattle to visit my mom and I was kind of tired and jet lagged. Okay, Heidi, share what you've made. I would love to see your creations. Uh, it just makes me happy to see everybody's versions. So basically, you take a piece of aluminum foil and you just start crumpling it. And like I said, I was tired and jet lagged and didn't put less thought to it, into it than I might have otherwise. And I was fascinated to see what came out and also to see everybody else's because the people who are more geometric in what they make, everybody's aluminum foil things came out looking like them. I suppose that's not a surprise, <laughs> but it, it was kind of fascinating. And then we actually pulled some of these things together. Like I think I, I, did, I did something with this. I've forgotten what it was, but one of my, my final piece actually was based on, on this. Oh, here it is. That's right. So that was my, it's a, these are broken off. So I kind of grabbed a couple and put them together and, and you can see the genesis of this idea. This was one of my favorites actually that I made. Um, and this was, this is, has the aluminum foil inside. And it's just, it's just a fun exercise and a great way to, oh, to just sculpt with, without really thinking yet about it, without overthinking. So that's what I'm going to encourage you to do um, for the roof. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some foil and just kind of play and see if I can come up with a shape that I like. I, maybe this would be for something else, but I don't love it. So I'm going to clear this away and get some foil I meant to grab that earlier and I apologize if this is annoyingly loud um, feel free to mute so you just pull out a piece and actually when I did it I was like closing my eyes and it was just what my hands were making it was what's cool about foil is that at this point you can still sculpt this quite a bit the as long as you don't crunch it down real tight to begin with well, that's kind of nothing but you can you can play with it. So if I'm thinking roof, so I'm looking at this and thinking roof. And I kind of had in my, my mind kind of a mushroom. Kind of, yeah, it's just kind of lumpy looking. So let's probably cone shapes are the kind of the toughest to do with the foil. You have to really have that in mind to begin with. So I'm going to start up here make the top of my cone. Um. Okay, Anastasia, I'm glad you joined us. And um, if you make a fairy house, then I would love it if you shared. Now that's starting to look like something. See, for me, it's like there's, there's no straight lines in sight. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for folks who have, like, terrible Internet, especially these days, because, gosh, my husband and I are on the Internet, like, all day long. Today he's out gardening. He promised he would leave <laughs> before I started my live stream, but it didn't happen. But he, he promised he'd be outside, and he tried not to knock anything over. 
Yeah, the top of a pumpkin or something more natural. I don't know. So you can just kind of, well, that's starting to look lumpy again. Probably because I'm thinking too hard, I'm not relaxed. I loved it, actually, doing it jet lagged <laughs> was very interesting because it was, there was very little internal editing. It was just like, whatever, I don't care. I'm just going to do this assignment. Corks, that's a good idea. So that's kind of cool, though that sort of looks like a bum. Here we go, get rid of the look of the bum. Oh, actually, I kind of like that. That's starting to look... I don't know if that's going to work for this house, but that's kind of whimsical. Another thing you can do, if you don't want to go the sculpting route, is you can do what I did with this and use a funnel. <laughs> this is one of those Tupperware funnels. I used to sell Tupperware years ago. And this is a great shape for a roof. Of course, you can, you can shape it beyond that once you're done. But this is just a beautiful, rounded, graceful shape. I think for these, I actually use these. This is a set of funnels I got on Amazon. And you can still use them in your kitchen afterwards because we're only using these to form, well, um, most of these I just formed foil on too, like this one, I think. Yeah, I just formed the foil onto it. And then, oh yeah, this is so old, it's crumbling. It just, it's funny how the things you make and then you stick in a drawer <laughs> and they just don't. And I wanted to show you one more cool thing about the sculpting with foil. This was an idea, and I'll give credit to the author of the book. It's, um, the book is Creating Lifelike Figures in Polymer Clay, and it's an amazing book with some incredible details, and I haven't made any of the figures from it yet, but I have made a lot of the tools, and this is one tool she recommends for smoothing your foil armatures. It's amazing. Um... So you're making a foil ball for a doll's head and you want it to be really tight. All this is, is, is a, it was basically all of the scrap clay I had at the time and then I indented it with a ladle. And you know, So you, you take a ball of foil to make a doll's head and you get this kind of lumpy misshapen thing. And if you want this to actually be round for a doll's head, it, it gets hard to do. But what's amazing is a few rolls in here. Can you see how much smoother that is? It's tight and smooth, and it kind of blows my mind. And I'm not pressing really hard, but of course it's harder than my fingers. And, and it really, and then, and you give it that egg shape. And now you have a really good foil armature for a doll's head. And it's nice and smooth, and then you can cover that with clay. So those are some tips. I think for, I am going to make a roof for this one. And I think I sort of want a mushroom cap thingy. Right, we'll get this out of the way. And, um, yeah. So I'm going to do a couple layers of foil so it has a little bit more holding power. Shape it around here. And I'm kind of folding up those bottom edges just to give it some thickness. So really, look around your house. That's my favorite thing to do, is to look around my house and find things that I, and see them with new eyes and find a new way of using something that nobody ever dreamed it would be used for. Again, maybe it's just the rebel in me that doesn't want to use things the way people said they ought to be.
That's looking a little big for that house. Just a little big in proportion. And, and remember, once you, when you're building an armature, that whatever goes on the... Um, whatever your base of your armature is, it, your final piece is going to be a fair amount bigger because you're going to put layers of clay on it. So I'm just kind of pleating this together. Oh, now before I forget... Well, I'm yakking away. I have questions for you guys. I have my little list of questions right here. All right. Um, so this week we're going to do the roof for the fairy house. And then next week, my favorite part, we're going to add lots of details. Um, maybe some vines and flowers. Those are some of my favorites. We could add mushrooms, bugs, crystals. Um, so after that, and, and give me ideas if there are other things. Let's see. Oh, now that's cute. I like that. That's kind of adorable. Um, after that, I think we have two remaining Tuesdays in April. I promised I would do live streams every Tuesday in April. So the question is, what do you want me to make? What would you like to make together? I am open for your suggestions. All right, so what I need is some scrap clay to cover this. That's interesting. I was going to do shingles, but now I don't know if I'm going to do shingles. Hmm. You definitely want to put scrap clay on it. Beads, okay, that's a big subject. <laughs> what kind of beads? <laughs> uh, beads, dragon. Mm. Most of the time I reserve the dragons for um, like the polymer clay adventure tutorials. Clay, yeah, okay, clay beads is still a huge topic. <laughs> oh my gosh, what kind of beads? Hmm. All right, I'm going to cover this with a sheet of clay. Uh, first, a, a solid sheet of foil. But maybe we could do a simple dragon. That might be fun. We could maybe put a dragon on the house. I had thought of that. A much smaller version of Rosalita that I showed you. Stamping in clay. I've actually done a video on stamping in clay. Oh, that's a fun one just to play with and explore. All right, I think I need some scrap clay. And I'm trying to decide how am I gonna, cause that, well, that can't go like that, can it? Let's see, if we put this, that doesn't fit on there. Hmm. I think I need to make a ball of foil up here to go as a support. Isn't that interesting? I've got everything out, laid out, ready to do shingles, and, and now I'm like going completely off the rails. <laughs> I'm not doing shingles. Hmm. I don't know, is that still a little too big for that house? No, it's a mushroom. It's going to be a mushroom, and I'm going to do this. Beads, dragons, stamping, and clay. All right. I will keep all those in mind and let you know. Um, yeah. Oh, I like that better. Still a little bit, though. Let's squish those in. Clay added to pebbles for pendants. Oh, actually, I, um, I did something similar. It was clay added to beads just like accenting little swirls and dots and things to kind of accent beads, which was fun to do. <laughs> Late night browsing, yeah. Let's see. So I'm just kind of sculpting away and trying to make something that is a good proportion and shape for this. That's kind of adorable. Let's squish that down a little more. Hmm. 
I think I like. What do you think? Sometimes, um, you know, just looking at it on camera, you, you kind of look at it with new eyes. So, so often, I'll be editing a video, and I'll be like, oh, my goodness, look at that. What did I do? How did I not see that? That's terrible. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I had been looking at it all along, but just something about seeing it in a different way with new eyes helps you see it better. There. Build that up. Now, if I was making a doll or a figure, I would cover this with, um, with tape. Like, floral tape is really good, especially. Oh, thank you, Tammy. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's kind of cute. And um, so much for shingles. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? I'm going to set this aside for a minute and I'm going to show you how to do shingles. Maybe I'll shingle this one. I have, I have no idea what that's going on. Like I said, this has been around for um, maybe eight years. <laughs> it's crumbling. But I'll show you how I made the shingles, and then maybe we'll go back to maybe making a mushroom top. All right, so I've got a few requests from you guys for what to make in the last two live streams in April. Um, feel free to chime in if you think of something else. I wanted to show you how I make my stripey blends. What I like to do, a little bit of, you, you could be mixed in there, it doesn't matter, <laughs> um, transparent is get, well first choose my color palette. I actually went online, I went to Pinterest and I looked up um, lighthouses. I looked up fairy lights, lighthouses to see, there really weren't many. Um, but then I just looked up lighthouses because this kind of looks like a lighthouse and wherever that other one went with the rocks, like I said, made me think of the ocean. Um, one of the things I noticed was a lot of them have that kind of ruddy, reddish paint on top. Um, so I decided to go with that kind of coloration. Something, uh, something that goes with the gray of the stones. But whenever I'm making a stripey blend, I like to have some darks, some lights, some mediums, and I often like to have a metallic. So that's what I have here is, let's see, I have, whoop, knocking things over, woo, come back, Granny. <laughs> um, this is um, chocolate, no, it's, it's actually the perfect color for chocolate if you're sculpting chocolates, um, which will make you gain weight, because <laughs> you have to eat them in order to look at them. Um, but this is burnt umber, also known as chocolate. It's just a little bit, it's like half as much of this because it's thinner than the others. I have Latte, this is Sculpey Souffle, Primo Burnt Umber, Sculpey Souffle, Latte, Silver, this is uh, Primo Raw Sienna, and Sculpey Souffle Cinnamon, and I think this is an Ecru mix that I had in my stash. So what I do is I condition each color separately, and then stack them up. I'm just doing this in miniature for you because you can see over here, I've actually already done the big sheet. And that, that piece of transparent is welcome to hitchhike. Um, and if I'm thinking and not talking, I will usually stack these so that they have contrast, but it doesn't really matter. So we'll just stack those all up. And cut it however many times you need to make kind of a log. You roll it out into a log. There we go. All those bits do not matter. You just want it cohesive so that you can start twisting it. This is my favorite technique. For just about anything, I think that a solid plain color is kind of boring. And so I just would prefer um, to have some variation and interest. 
So once it starts to break apart because you're twisting, just roll it out, smooth it out, twist some more. That's okay, it doesn't matter. Somewhere around here is a acrylic roller. All right, I have another question for you while I'm doing this, just rolling this out so that I can send it through the pasta machine. You can definitely do this without a pasta machine, but a pasta machine makes it easier. So you just roll it out, and you can see that the more you twist it, the thinner your stripes get. So I'm going to send this through, and since, it, since it's a small amount, I'm going to send it through in a thinnish setting, like maybe a, a third thickest. And there we have stripes. And generally, I end up folding it and sending it through again about three times, and that gives me a look I like. So let's see, we'll do... There's one, two, and one more, and three. So now, yeah, you, you, if I did it, I think this one I must have done a fourth time. Let's see. Let's see what happens. It depends on what you're doing with it. Just gives you a nice variation. Yeah. So whatever works to make it look good to you. Then I rolled the whole thing out again on a pretty thin setting. This is rolled down to about a millimeter in thickness, which on my pasta machine, on my Atlas, is a number six setting. And then you can just start cutting out shingles. And you can make them any shape that makes you happy. I would just say make them in proportion to the roof you're putting them on. So be here. And cut at angles. And some can be bigger. And some can be smaller. Oops, I forgot a step. All right, forget that. <laughs> I forgot a step I really like, and that is to add some texture. This is the Tim Holtz, I think it's called the Craft Scratcher. He actually made it for like distressing paper. I'm gonna move this because I don't need clay bits in my bracelet. But it actually is great for giving kind of a wood look to clay. And I'm just scratching with the lines. And this will look amazing once you've baked it and then go over it with some paint. So you can see I did the same thing on this one and how those scratches really, really sell the look of, of shingles. So this was antiqued with probably black, I'm guessing. And then I kind of went over it with some other colors. I think some swell again. Oh, and while I've got this in my hands, this is also grouted with the liquid clay. This, because this is a much deeper texture, because these are actually applied chunks of clay to make the stones, it really shows up a lot more than this one. But this was just, I'm pretty sure it was just a, um, liquid clay with possibly some embossing powder in it. But anyways, so... Yeah, use, you can use a needle tool to do the scratching and you will get these little crumbs. Don't worry about them, just gather them up. But yeah, do that scratching. You don't see it so much now, but after you bake it and antique it, um, it really looks cool. All right, back to what we were doing. And just cut them out at angles. Am I using the sharp side down? I am. Not always. And I recommend cutting out a bunch of these. And then you can apply them. So... Because this is so old, like I said, and it's crumbling, I'm going to add liquid clay to it. Although, usually you wouldn't need to because it's if you're doing raw clay to raw clay. 
but you also might want to make your shape like this and then pre-bake it. I love, that's one thing I love about polymer clay is the fact that you can make something and then bake it and set it before you move on to the next step. Because I tend to be careless and make a mess. And squash and wreck things. <laughs> So, oh, all right, yeah, back to the questions. I had some questions for you guys. So, yeah, um, for those of you who just joined us, we're finishing up, the, well, we're working on the roof for the fairy house, and you can watch how mm, this base was constructed last week. We're working on the roof this week, and then next Tuesday we'll do details, which is just the most fun. Flowers, vines, leaves, bugs, mushrooms, crystals, what else? Let me know if you can think of other things we could add. Um, then after that, well, there's going to be two more weeks in April. Uh, some of you have requested beads, dragons, stamping in clay. I'll think about it. I will let you know. Also, um, I sent out an email, oh, well, I sent one out, um, actually, it should have gone out today, and I, oh, I didn't get it, hmm, maybe it, didn't, maybe it went astray. I sent out an email yesterday with a supply list. If you're on my email list, you should have gotten it yesterday, and if you open my emails, any of the last five, I think, um, then you should have gotten a reminder this morning about this live stream. Hi, Margaret. Um, but my question is, what is your preferred timing for reminders? I know sometimes I've gotten emails from companies that will send out a reminder like 10 minutes. You know, we're going live in 10 minutes. And I'm usually way too busy for that. Or, you know, we're going live in an hour or we're going live tomorrow. Uh, what works best for you for a reminder? So what I've got here is translucent clay. So that will work underneath the shingles. Am I doing this right? Yes. And then we're just going to put these on. Um, the foil can or doesn't have to remain a permanent part of the roof. It's up to you. Um, Entirely up to, to you. Now don't forget you've got one side that is scratched with the texture, so put that side facing up. And that's how I did the shingles. And I love that, you know, like that one's sticking out kind of funny, and that's okay. And we'll just go around with the shingles, and then of course another row and I have no idea what house this is going to go on you'll see it might go on the one I just made it might not Oop. so that's um, dragons sound really good okay maybe a simple dragon Hmm. Oh, this is my lump for gathering up all those crumbs and scraps. Whoop. Okay, um, so let me know what, what works for you for um, mode of reminder. I've been putting them on, um, like I said, in an email to those who are on my email email newsletter list and also on Facebook and so let me know about that also um, oh I'm looking at meeting my list okay 
I just finished a Friday findings video. I just finished editing it last night and writing the blog post for it right before we started here today on um, making you get a little bit of a sneak peek. Email is good. Okay, thank you. Um, email a day before, 10 minutes before. So, oh, I finished this Friday findings on making your own head pins out of wire. It's actually um, a reboot of a video I did a few years ago, and the quality was pretty bad, and I was off camera way too much of the time. I mean, sometimes when you're doing wire work and you're going like this, whoop, <laughs> it's, it can be really hard to... Uh, stay on camera if you don't have a cameraman and a producer yelling at you hey cut <laughs> we do that um which i don't uh, so i redid that video and i think this version is much better on making your own findings because if we're not going out to the store we may find ourselves running out of staples uh, and I'm wondering what else you would like to see a Friday Findings video on, uh, if there's any topic in particular that you've been wishing I would do a video on. So now we'll do some more shingles. About a day before, that's what I was thinking, what, that's... I mean, I try to think what would work for me, but sometimes I think I'm not, I'm not my normal, my average audience, <laughs> because sometimes, I don't know, what I think would work for me is not what would work for everybody. Well, that's what I thought. I think I sent it out yesterday around one-ish, and I don't know, it seemed good to me. And then another like, reminder... A day before. Okay, thank you for letting me know. I guess I've been on the right track. That's good. Are, are you on my email list? Um, if not, there's a link in the description box to get on there. I, I send out emails when there's a new video out on YouTube or when I have a new class. Things like that. Um, or if I have a sale on my tutorials. And, oh, that was my other thing. I've got myself a list of things to talk to you guys about. Um, the other one was to, if you haven't joined my Facebook group, Keepsake Crafts Create, it's starting to grow and take off. We're getting more and more people sharing what they're making, which is fun. Uh, so if you haven't, if you've been making a fairy house, I hope you'll join and, and show everybody what we've been making on these live streams. And me, because I don't get to see what you're doing. You get to see what I'm doing. But no fair. <laughs> I don't get to see what you're making. And that's that's so much fun. When um, I don't often teach live classes, but when I do, for me, that's just the most fun is seeing how people take uh, what I've done and then make it their own. I just love seeing the variations, the different color choices. It's, it's just the best part is to see all the different ways people people's imaginations work um so there's a is there a, i will put a link to my facebook group it's keepsake crafts create i have a page uh and then i have a and then i i never could figure out when i had a facebook page only why people weren't posting things until i realized that's a facebook group am i the only one that finds facebook kind of labyrinthine it's just like a maze that you have to navigate and figure things out. It wasn't that long ago that I said, oh, I need a group, and then people couldn't share things. Okay. <laughs> so, so I started a group, and we're growing, and it's just always fun to see everybody's creations.
So you guys are here because uh, I'm making polymer clay things. But how many of you make jewelry as well? Obviously, some of you, those who have asked for clay pendants and clay beads. Does everybody make jewelry also? Or just strictly uh, clay sculptures? I think you get the idea, and when you cut these at an angle, it really allows you to go around a shape like this, but you could build it on any shape. I'm going to do, let's see, let's, I think what I want to do is, um, well, I think I'll leave you with the, um, I think I'm, I think I'm going to head out pretty soon. We've been getting together for about an hour and a half, but I actually have a pile of things to do today. So I think we're going to leave it at that. What I would suggest you do with this, if you're going to do an entirely sculpted shape, made up shape, where it's not on a form like this one, is actually get in here with some craft glue. You could use hot glue. And, and get your form kind of set so that this is in here just the way you want it. And then cover the whole thing with scrap clay. Depending on what else you're going to do with it, keep in mind if like something like these shingles where the colors may show through, then, um, then you know, use a scrap clay that's going to work underneath if a little bit of it shows. Like this, I think I'm going to do some sort of mushroom. So I don't, I think I'll go over it with a shin, thin, with a thin sheet of scrap and then go over it with whatever the color is for my mushroom, which I have not decided yet. I'm still thinking kind of like a, something warm and ruddy. Not, not those red mushrooms like we always see, but maybe something ruddy. Maybe brushing on some pastels like, a, whoop, um, for an ombre and kind of a rustic look. That would be, yeah. So I think I'm gonna stop there and go finish my lunch and clean up. I've got, like I said, a few other things to do. And I hope that I've given you lots of fun ideas. And that, um, yeah, actually, wait a minute. Sorry about that. I stepped on the cord for the mic. My husband's poor lapel mic is quite abused. Let's see. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> there we are. Hi. Um, yeah, I'm going to head out now and have my lunch. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. It was fun chatting with you, and I look forward to doing these every week, and it's great getting your feedback. And I'm especially excited to see what you guys are creating. So share it in the Facebook group and we can continue the conversation there. You are very welcome, Sherry. It was, it's always just so much fun to do. I, I love doing it. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see it, Kim. Yay. Yay for fairy houses. And give me ideas for other things. For, um, I'll be thinking about other details to add. Um, although often it's as I'm in the middle of doing it that I think of other things but all right well have fun we'll get together next week and add all sorts of details I'll be sure to send out a reminder and you guys all stay safe and sane as well have a great week bye-bye